This is Into the Chasm, a dungeon crawler game that I've been working on for the past two years. It's been seven months since my last devlog, so here's all the stuff I've been working on since then. One of the main elements of Into the Chasm is the story. In the last devlog, I mentioned that one of the ways I was telling the story was through quests. Soon after I posted that video, I created the quest for level 5. It relies on the soul candles which I introduced when I was designing level 9. Level 5 is where the final battle between the monsters of the chasm and the humans took place, and where the five great mages died. The quest is to find and light five soul candles, one for each of the mages. Before I could do much more than this, a bunch of stuff happened that led to me not being able to use my laptop for months. I'm not going to talk about that here, but that's the reason why I haven't posted in so long. When I regained access to Into the Chasm in late February, I had an entirely new idea I wanted to implement. The entire game up to this point has been melee, so I decided to add a ranged weapon. But what projectile to use? I eventually settled on a staff that can shoot souls. So I got to work designing them. Every time you kill an enemy, you gain one soul with a maximum of 20. You can sell the souls for XP in the enchantments menu, or if you've got the staff equipped, you can shoot them at enemies, each doing one damage. I had to limit the number you could hold to prevent spamming, but it was tempting to remove the limit just so the player could do this. I also added this nice sound effect to the souls, which gets quieter as they move away. Something that's annoyed me for a while is that there's no way to see which abilities you have or how many. So I got to work on a new book, the spell book, which can be accessed from the armory. It just shows you the icon for each spell, with locks over the ones you haven't unlocked. I also noticed a bug when going between the armory and the spellbook, which caused an animation to play when it shouldn't. So I quickly fixed this, which significantly improved how it felt navigating the menu. Some of my older viewers may have noticed that in the spellbook, there are 10 spells, but in the past devlogs, there were only 8 in the game. The two new spells are the Double Sword and the Ghost. The Double Sword, when activated, makes a second sword appear behind you and lasts for 5 seconds. This allows you to fight on two sides at once, and makes spinning your sword a crippling attack. This was really easy to implement, so I'm going to move on to the next one. The second new ability, the Ghost, is a bit more complex. The initial plan was to have it allow the player to move through walls. However, besides this being generic, it also brought up a ton of issues, like the fact that the player could use it to leave the map, which I regrettably only noticed after programming the entire thing. So I had a new idea. Five seconds after being activated, it would teleport the player back to where they were when they activated it. This was simple to implement. I created a new Ghost scene with a transparent version of the character as its sprite. I scripted it so that after 5 seconds, it would make the screen flash, teleport the player to it, and then disappear. Then, I made using the ghost ability instantly spawn one of these in your current location, and I was done. Besides these two abilities, I also designed the concepts for the last two. The first one is called the Soul Bomb. When activated, the player will explode, taking one damage and killing all the enemies in a small radius. However, there's a catch. For 15 seconds after use, you will be weakened, causing you to move slower, deal less damage, and take more damage. The last ability will be the Defense Ring. I had the idea recently of creating stalagmites which the boss will be able to summon up from the ground. They will do damage to anyone they hit and will remain in place blocking movement for 3 seconds. However, I decided that instead of only using them for the boss, I will create an ability which allowed the player to summon a ring of stalagmites around them. Speaking of stalagmites, I've also added stalactites to the game. They fall from the sky in a small area for 1 second, damaging anything in the area. Stalactites have a chance of appearing every time the player uses the ground pairing ability and every time a pebble monster slams into a wall. I created this little sprite for them, and then made particles using it, and I think it looks pretty good. Currently, when the player dies or completes a level, the scene will instantly change, which feels a little jerky, so I came up with a simple solution which was to have a 0.2 second fade-out animation. This is just a little polishing touch, but I quite like it. Speaking of polish, another issue I have with the game is that you don't know when you get a new ability, so I created this animation which tells you whether you got a new ability or a duplicate. The final new thing I did was change the chests. I didn't like how difficult it was to actually find abilities since they only spawn from this rare type of chest, so I created a new spawner item which replaces itself with a random item drop, either a health potion, an XP potion, a spellbook page, a soul crystal, or occasionally a spider. I then set each chest type to create differing numbers of these spawners, so you can now gain abilities from any chest type. So there, that's all the progress I've made on Into the Chasm in the past 7 months. If you enjoyed this video, you should subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and join my Discord server. Also, if you're interested in how I added quests to the game, click here.